Hello and welcome to Introduction to Philosophy. I'm Dr. Norris Frederick, your professor for this term, and I'm really looking forward to working with you. It's both fun and frankly terrifying to be in front of a camera like this, but since we're doing a course online, I wanted to get to know you as much as possible and let you know a little bit about what I'm like as well. Many years ago, a philosopher, philosopher named Aristotle uh, said, all people by nature desire to know, which is a really interesting statement if you think about it. All people by nature desire to know. And I think that's true. Uh, many years ago, when my son Chris, who's now 37 years old, when he was about four years old, uh, he and I were the first people up in the morning. It was about 7.30. I was having some of my favorite drug coffee. And Chris came to me and had been lightning and thundering the night before, and he said, Dad, is the lightning gone? And trying to be a good father, I said, yes, son, the lightning is gone. And then my four-year-old son Chris said, well, where did it go? Which is a really interesting question because no one taught him to ask that question. I think Aristotle was right, just by nature, he wanted to know, where did it go? And if you think about it, that may seem like a kind of a silly question, but it's a scientific question. And in a way, it's a metaphysical question too. You know, we ask those questions when people die. A good friend of mine had her mother die recently. We, have, we try to answer the question, where do people go when they die? So one of the things philosophy does, I'm going to talk about three things philosophy does. One is to wonder. Plato said all philosophy begins in wonder. Wondering, asking questions. Chris was wondering. Another aspect of philosophy, though, is not just to ask those questions, but to try to use reason to come to the answers to those questions. And again, I use an example of Chris when he was four years old. At that time, we were trying to be great parents. We wanted to teach our son to be nonviolent, and so we were telling him not ever to use any, we wouldn't let him play with any guns. And so one day I was sitting around after dinner, and my son Chris had come up with a fire log, and he was holding the fire log like this and going, shh, shh, shh. And I said, Chris, you know we don't like you to play with guns. And he said, Dad, he said, a hand is not a gun. And just like that, a log is not a gun. I was just startled by the sheer reasoning he was giving me. I was totally in with what he was saying, listening to him. And then he paused, and then this kind of weird smile came on his face, and he says, only people, only the police use real guns when people try to come cut you up. And the third aspect of philosophy is a worldview. If you think about the first two aspects, the first one is asking questions, wondering, a sense of awe about the universe. The second is using reason or critical thinking or analysis. The third is putting everything together into a worldview, which is a coherent, consistent set of answers to the most basic questions that people can ask. And I want to talk a minute now about the five areas of philosophy that we investigate in terms of these, in terms of these questions. I know you're starting to think I'm a compulsive list maker. That's what some people said about Buddha as well, with his four noble truths and the Eightfold Path. But we'll explain this as we go. There are five major areas of philosophy, and I want to explain each of them briefly. And the five are metaphysics, epistemology, ethics, logic, and aesthetics. And yes, you should be taking some notes on this. And in addition, there are particular areas of inquiry that might bring all of these into play, and those would include things like uh, political philosophy, philosophy of religion, philosophy of science, and any number of these. Metaphysics asks the question of what is real, or what is really real, or what is ultimately real. And the key thing here is the distinction between appearances and reality. For example, this is the Queen's Library. Do you think the library is real? It's made up of bricks and mortar, and maybe you think that makes it real. What about the books in there? Are they real? What about the ideas in the books? Are they real? Or Einstein saying, imagination is more important than knowledge. Maybe it's not just bits of matter that are real according to science. And now we're in the courtyard 
between the new science building and the Queen's Chapel. And if you notice, the chapel, like many buildings at Queen's, this is a neoclassical building, leads the eye up and suggests that there's something perhaps up above that's really real. Is that real? And if it is real, but how would we know? The question of epistemology comes up again. So metaphysics and epistemology are really inseparable questions, inseparable areas of philosophy. So we've talked about metaphysics and epistemology. Metaphysics, what's really real, and epistemology, how do we know? Two of the topics of this course we're going to focus on, the self and human freedom, fall into these areas of metaphysics and epistemology. In terms of the self, what is the self? Is there really a self, or is it just a series of actions that we take in different situations? And secondly, in terms of freedom, do we really act freely, or is everything we do a product of nature and nurture? Finally, a big part of the course is going to focus on a major question of ethics. Ethics looks at the area of not only of what's right and wrong, but the good life. What's the best life for humans? Or in other words, what is true happiness? The fifth area of philosophy is aesthetics. What is beautiful? What is art? When I look at this fountain in front of the Queen's Library, I think it's very beautiful. And even the mural in the library itself I like, although some folks think it's ugly. But ethical questions can be asked about this as well. Should we really spend money for a fountain that's not necessarily needed? How do we weigh beauty and ethics when there are plenty of other needs? And when we think about human happiness, does a library have anything to do with it? Does thinking have to do with human happiness at all? So, just to conclude our little discussion of philosophy, a little summary of what we've talked about today. We talked about the three aspects of philosophy that you can see on the board. Sense of wonder and awe, reasoning, critical thinking, analysis, and you try to answer those questions. And third, a world, a worldview or synoptic vision, which is an attempt to answer all these questions in a consistent, coherent way. We also talked about five areas of philosophy. Metaphysics. We also talked about five areas of philosophy, which you can see there. And you need to know these terms. It'll be good for you to know these terms as we go through the semester. So this is graduation week here at Queens, and it won't be long before you'll be here yourself. Tomorrow and the next day, these seats will be full of people. Faculty will be here. The president will be here. But I hope this course is going to be a part of your having an education so that you realize an education is not just obviously about getting a job. That's partly it. But about asking these big questions and becoming a better person. Thanks for joining me on this journey.